Hey, good morning everyone, or good afternoon, because of how late I'm having to do this video. Um, so, for our next section, we already started reading it, but we are going over the optical tools. Um, for this video, we're going to mostly just focus on the camera piece, and then we are going to do the telescopes and microscopes in the next videos. But for today, it's just the camera piece, okay? So let's look at our slideshow. Alright, so... Um, optical tools. How are lenses used in cameras and telescopes and microscopes? This is the main focus of this section. Okay, we're looking at the lenses that we learned in um, how the lenses that we learned in two sections ago, with the concave and convex lenses, and we're going to see how those apply to cameras, telescopes, and microscopes to allow us to see different things. Okay, so. First, what I want us to do is just to look at the camera. So here, this, um, and also if you wanted to look at this again, this is on page, uh, or what was it, page 60, or my closest in the way, page 66, and this is uh, figure number 23. It breaks down the pieces of a camera. Um, so with the camera, Let's look at how it works. First, let's just trace the path that the light follows, okay? If we're looking at the top of this giraffe's head. It's gonna, the light comes into the camera. It's first gonna pass through this lens, okay? That lens is gonna change the direction of the light. You can see there's a slight bend right here. And then after that, it's gonna bend the light to go through our aperture here. Um, the aperture is the hole in the camera, the hole in the shutter that allows uh, light to pass through. Or, uh, sorry, not the hole in the shutter, the hole in the diaphragm that allows light to pass through. This is, um, uh, the diaphragm is the part that's going to open and close, uh, kind of like the iris of, our, of the eye, okay? The shutter is w this little door that's going to flip open and flip close really fast just to let light in because then it's going to go, the light's going to go into the camera and then hit the film on the back of the camera. That light, once it hits the film, it's going to automatically put an image in. So if it's left open for too long, you'll have blurry images. And if it's left open too little, you're going to have very hard to see images. Okay. So it's coming in, hitting the lens, going through the aperture of the diaphragm, and then it's gonna hit this shutter at a certain, at a different angle because it was changed by the lens. And it's gonna put onto the film in the background, okay? So, first thing we wanna focus on is that as the rays are coming in, they are being bent at this lens to pass through our diaphragm, okay? After that, a real image become, is then formed because the angle is changed. We have a, a new focal point. It's going to produce a real image, which remember, all real images are upside down. So this is going to put an image onto our camera that's going to be upside down. Now, if you're using a film-based camera, you can, once you develop the film and turn it into a picture. You can't really tell that it's upside down because it just seems, uh, it's just on a piece of paper. You can always flip it right side up. But if you think about it, every single piece of a negative, uh, which is the, um, the real image on the film, that is actually upside down, okay? So, one last time. Light is gonna pass through the camera. It's gonna go through the lens, get redirected to go through the diaphragm, which is a certain size for the aperture to allow light in. It's gonna go through the shutter right here and finally reach the film, okay? Um, what I want you to do uh, with this video is I want you to answer the question, or two questions actually. Why is the image on the film upside down and I want you to try thinking about digital cameras. Where do you think the image is going to form on a digital camera? Okay, I'll talk about the answer to the digital camera in, and the answer to this one in our classroom tomorrow. So once again, why is the image on the film upside down? And where does the image form on a digital camera? Okay, so think about that and write your answers in uh, the classroom question. 